Hi, welcome back to the second part of the demo. We will now continue the format string vulnerability and buffer overflow problem uh, talked in part one. Um, this particular problem is an extension of the problem we discussed in part one. Um, in part one, we looked into the FMT binary. Uh, we exploited the buffer overflow by taking advantage of the format string vulnerability. Uh, we called the uh, hack me function separately, main message separately. Um, but this particular problem is asking us to call both functions one after another. Uh, let's quickly see the program. If you recall from part one of the demo, uh, we looked into the fmt.c program. Hack me and main message are two different functions. We call this separately. Nowhere from this code we can see call to the function. Hack me was never called. Main message was also not called. But the question is different now. It's asking us to first print this message and then print this message. So we need to be able to jump here first and then return to this particular main message function and then get out of the program because of this exit. So how do we do that? Um, I'm not going to repeat everything we discussed during the part one, so I'm going to request you to watch part one first. Um, the idea is simple. I will quickly draw the stack layout based on the binary that we discussed earlier. Um, let's get started. So I'm going to uh, draw the big picture, if you want to call that way. Um, what are the components of the big picture? Uh, we had return address, right? The main, when echo was called, echo is supposed to get back to main, right? That's the return address. So we will first uh, do some text editing here, uh, return address, right? This is pointing to main, and then we we saw EBB, right? That's the, the caller CBB, which is in the case of uh, this particular program, it's the main CBB. The very first statement is pushing the EBB. So EBB of main. Um, of course, now we have our EBB pointer, which is going to point to this particular location during the execution of the echo function. And then comes uh, 12 spaces we saw earlier, we need 12 spaces. So let's create four, eight, well, not exactly 12 spaces, eight spaces, and then comes the uh, canary, which was protecting the buffer overflow. Um, but we were able to overcome that. Please see the video of part one. Okay, so it is EBB minus four, minus eight, minus 12, right? Um, maybe we should just copy here. We call it EBB minus 12. And there we have this pointer pointing here. Okay. And then we saw we need uh, enough space for our buffer. 32 uh, bytes of buffer. So I'm going to just not draw all of the words. Assume here are 32 bytes, so I'll just write it here. 32 bytes for buffer. Okay, so, so in order to overflow the buffer, we need to fill up the buffer first and then fill up the canary and then fill up something, some four, uh, some four bytes here, another four bytes here another four bytes here and then overwrite the return address. That's what we, we did during the part one. 
Now in, the, in part two, which is interesting because we need to call first HackMe and then call main message. So luckily, HackMe has, is not taking any argument. So all we have to do is just create um, another, let me just draw another picture here. Basically, we need to extend the diagram like this a little bit. And I will insert another return address. So, which will be the main message return address, right? And here, it's not any more, oops. So we will be replacing the main um, main by Hackme. So basically, that didn't work very well. Undo. Let's just erase this part. Okay, that's better. And I will write it here. Return address pointing to uh, hack me first and then above it will be return address pointing to main message so that's all okay so this is the stack layout and now uh, all we have to do is fill up the 32 bytes for the buffer find the current canary value fill up another um, eight bytes of junk Actually, we can fill up 12 bytes of junk because we don't really need um, anything useful. Um, sorry, let me take it back. 32 bytes of buffer and then canary value and then four bytes of junk here, another four bytes of junk here and then replace um, the EBB uh, with whatever we like. Um, we don't really need EBB value, so, so we should be able to print anything like AA or BBB or whatever. And above it, uh, we will put the um, hack me address and then above it will be the main message. So that's pretty much it. Okay, just to be clear, the layout will be something like this. Okay, should be fine, very good. So we need to be able to fill up the stack in, in this style. And I have written, um, a small payload generator that I will show you now. Okay, let's see. We just go into my payload generator, same as what we saw earlier in, in the part one demo. Only small change is now that we will be actually getting into hack me first and then the main message. So let's walk through this layout first. 32 bytes of buffer, we will fill up here. We will fill up the Kennedy, and then we'll fill up 12 bytes to reach the EBB. So this means this picture needs to be corrected a little bit. So let me correct that. Okay. I need to put one more box. All right. So I'm going to erase this, erase this, and then I will Draw another line here, better. Not a beautiful diagram, but that's okay. So th this is the canary, which is supposed to be pointing at EBB minus 12. That means we need to go up 12 bytes to reach the EBB. So minus four, minus eight, minus 12. That means this is the place EBB is pointing to, or supposed to point to. So let's just correct this, EBB, and let's have a pointer here, good. And now we are good to go. Text, give us the return address, pointing to hack me first, and then return address, pointing to main message. So this is the layout that we have here, and it is consistent with the diagram and the payload structure that I'm showing you here, all right? The only thing we need to fix is the canary value, which we don't know and until we run the program. So let's uh, get out and run it and update the current canary value, and then we will fix these, this particular payload generator program. Okay, let's get out here. And uh, let's run the 
FMT program. So remember, 15th position will give us the current stack canary value, which I copied now, and fix the canary address now. So I copied and pasted the current canary value. So I need to fix it here. So zero, zero is good. Two, eight, and then three E, and then nine, five. Okay. So what we are filling in here with 32 A's and the canary here, and then we will fill up 12 bytes of uh, B's. So four here, four here, four here, 12 bytes, and then we fill up the Hackme address and the main message address, that's all. Okay, so we all we have to do now is to just run the Perl program, right? And overwrite the file that we need to pass in. And now we need to uh, tell this particular program how many bytes to read. Remember last time we did our uh, demo for part one, we were giving read 52 bytes. Now we need to read 56 bytes instead, right? Because 32 bytes here, another four bytes here, 36, 40, 44, 48, 52, 56 bytes must be read from the payload file. Uh, we can actually see what is there in the payload file if you want to see that and convince yourself that it has the, the data that we're looking for. As I can, as far as we can see very quickly, lots of A's and then the canary just we typed in and then 12 B's and then the address of hack me followed by the address of main message. So the payload seems to be in a good shape. Let's see what happens now. Well, it works. The first message is I, I thought the stack canary cookie will protect me and then it prints the next message. So these two messages are coming from our C code. Um, now we can reduce the window. We don't need this. Okay, so we were able to first jump here and call this and print this and then call and print this. I, I leave it to you an exercise. If uh, hack me has an extra argument, you need to, to change the layout a little bit, but it's not a huge challenge. Um, one thing worth noticing is that I also wanted to show you, if you just compile the code, what type of compiler warnings you will get. You get the interesting warnings. For example, um, gets is not declared, that's, that's one thing. Another problem is more serious rather. Format's not a string literal. So we were calling the, the um, print function. We didn't say percentage yes, percentage D and things like that. We were just calling it directly and passing the buffer as an argument, which is tainted because it's user input. And then another compiler warning we are getting is um, that the gets function is dangerous and should not be used. Um, so you know why they are saying it now. Um, where is it? Look at this, uh, 38. Yeah, it's a dangerous function because that's the reason we were able to fill up this, this whole thing here, move here all the way up and, and corrupt the return address and so on. Okay, then um, let's go, go get back to the problem, which is asking us to, uh, which is asking us to solve the problem of printing uh, the message through the hackme method, the hackme function, followed by the main message function. Okay, that's all pretty much. Thank you very much.